part of my job at Rackspace is to look for new companies that are uh, going to affect our business and make, make our customers' lives uh, better. <laughs> and Instar Logic is one of those. Uh, when they showed me their system and how much faster it, it makes web pages load uh, and apps work, uh, I was really intrigued and we're going to see it right now. So I'm Manav Mittal, founder and CEO of Instart Logic. I've been doing this for the last three and a half years now. Prior to this, I cut my teeth at a big data startup, an early Sequoia-backed big data startup called Astradata, where I met my co-founders with whom I started this company. And prior to that, I was part of the web search team at Yahoo. I am a PhD dropout from the computer science department at UCLA and did my bachelor's from IIT Kanpur in India that I think some people should at least know about. Very cool. So I already sort of hinted where it, what Instart Logic does. It makes uh, apps and websites and things faster, right? Yes. So we are a SaaS company in the application delivery space, and our customers tend to be performance-obsessed online businesses who use our service to make their applications and sites load really, really fast for their end users. And I can show you a quick example yeah. of the practical benefit of using our service. Let, let's play the video. And, and while we're seeing the comparison, what, mm -hmm. what are we seeing? So basically what we're seeing is a side-by-side -side demonstration of a typical e-commerce website loading using a legacy CDN service. You know, these are the typical services that are used for application delivery today. On the right, a typical site is loading using that service and on the left using Instart Logic instead. And as you can see, the difference in end user experience is dramatic. Yeah. Like typically when I give these demos, I run out of what to talk about while the part on the right stuff side is loading. It's just so slow and painful and we just make that whole user frustration go away. Uh, old CDNs like Akamai or whatnot were really about um, uh, caching a web page out uh, to the edge of the internet, yes. right? So if you're in a if you're, if you're here in Silicon Valley, you probably are having a pretty good experience because you're yeah. close to a lot of the data centers, uh -huh. or, or you used to be at least. Uh, and if you're in, um, I don't know, India or Israel or somewhere else in the world, uh -huh. your uh, your latency and, and your uh, a long ways, and uh -huh. and your uh, web pages have to go through a thin little tiny pipe, yes, yes, comparatively, to get to you, right? Uh -huh. So you put a machine close to the user, and that speeds things up. Yeah. How does you, What's your technology doing that Akamai isn't? Yeah, so I think, let me just uh, sum that up in a little bit. Yeah. So what these legacy CDN services do, or these other application delivery services do, is that they were built for the world where users used to connect directly to the edge of the internet on Wintel boxes using a wired network. Yeah. But now users are walking further and further away from that edge. They access the internet on different devices which all connect using wireless network. That could be 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi. So that is where those thin pipes come in, right? So what has happened is that while these services optimize for the edge, the problems and challenges in application delivery have moved past the edge. And they now reside between the edge and the end user. So that's what Instart Logic addresses. The, what, what we have developed is a software-based solution that helps us build an abstraction on the entire application delivery path end-to-end. -end. That's our solution. So let's, let's back that. Let's explain that in normal language. Yes. Uh, if I have an iPhone, it only has a s certain amount of pixels. Yes. So why I saw like, like the thing on the right had really high resolution pictures yes. and that's why they were loading slowly, yes, right? Yes. Because uh, you had to put a high resolution yes. picture in there for everything. Yes. As, from a TV down to a yes. small little iPhone. But yes. if I'm on an iPhone, you don't need to deliver that high res picture, right? Yes, we don't need to deliver everything. Right. And that's the big insight behind our technology. So what our technology does is the following. We have developed a client cloud-based solution to solving this problem. So all these legacy solutions, they're cloud only. Our service involves a client as well, which gives us this end-to-end -end control over the delivery path. Okay. And what that lets us do, it lets us optimize the application dynamically for all sorts of last mile connections and end devices. So coming back to this example, your iPhone is connecting to the internet on some, let's say, 4G connection and displaying images which may be built for a very high resolution retina display monitor, let's say, right? So they're pulling down that big image and they're kind of you know, pulling it down fully on this uh, last mile. 
what our service does is that it instead of delivering the entire image upfront and uh, shipping it in bulk, it will stream the image over, much like video streaming. So you can start rendering and the user can start interacting with the application once only a subset of the application content has been pulled down. Also, it will dynamically resize images, as an example, for your appropriately for your iPhone display and for any other display that you're connected to. A lot of people are paying a, a data plan, uh, you know, I, they don't have unlimited yeah. data. Does this help cut down the uh, data sent over yes. the wireless network to a phone? Yes, this is a very big problem today with overall data congestion in the last mile. Yeah. And that translates to a lot of carrier costs because they have to ship a lot of data around, a lot of costs that users incur for their data plans and whatnot. With our approach to stream content and resize content and optimize content for the endpoint, we can help carriers and end users overcome those type of challenges. So let's say I have a big e-commerce site and I, I'm intrigued. I want to make my customers' lives faster. How, how do I get this? So we have a, a direct sales model today. We work with customers and our integration interface is exactly the same as a CDN. So what we would do is we would find out the right stakeholder inside the company, typically you know, it could be anybody from the IT department or the line of business owner. And what we would do is we would give them a side-by-side -side comparison or some sort of a benchmark, much like what we just showed, of what benefit we can offer them. And then using existing tools developed for the CDN land, they can spill over a fraction of their traffic onto a service and really see the kind of benefit we offer. And then it becomes a no-brainer type of a decision for most people we talk to. A lot of people uh, get a CDN from cloud, their cloud provider, like yes. Rackspace uses Akamai, and I think so does Amazon, and if you're on Microsoft, Azure, or uh, uh, Google's uh, App Engine, they all have their own CDNs. Yeah. Uh, are you working with people like Rackspace to rip out the Akamai and put in uh, Instart Logic? Or? So we are working on generating awareness about the importance of replacing CDNs with a new age technology. So what has happened, Robert, is in the last decade, there has been little or no innovation in the CDN space. If you look at application performance holistically, right, there's a lot of investment that has happened in the space of application performance in the form of your low latency storage solutions in the data center, scale out data centers, gigabit ethernet. If you talk to application developers, they now use Node.js and jQuery and Ruby on Rails, et cetera, to build really high performance applications. Application delivery has seen no enhancements in the last 10 years. So that's why 10 years ago, companies like Rackspace, et cetera, made decisions to integrate with the biggest CDN vendor they could find, and they've left it as is. So if, it, it, let's just talk about Rackspace for a yes. minute. Yes, okay. Forget everybody else. Yeah. If we bought it for our cloud computing uh, customers, yes. what would we need to do to our data centers to uh, offer this as a service? So uh, you wouldn't need to do anything to your data center. You would be using a CDN today you would just switch over to using our CDN service and then you package the whole solution and give it to your customers. For your customers, all their consumer apps, business apps, anything which is basically putting web content in the hand of users, that will get sped up. Okay, and what's the cost differential based on, uh, on the other uh, competitors like an Akamai or whatnot? How much more should I expect to pay for Instart Logic? So ultimately, our customers end up benefiting from using our service because the cost associated with switching to our service is very minor relative to the massive benefits they get. Because if you look at e-commerce, right, if you make the sites load even a couple seconds faster, that's massive in terms of top line revenue, user engagement, brand value, et cetera. And same thing is true for SaaS applications, for news, for media entertainment, and pretty much any online business. Yeah. Where do you think this is going? Because you're doing a really hardcore, almost R&D work at the yes. internet level. Where do you, where do you think this, this world is going and what are you working on to make it even better? So I think this world, we are living in a world which is going to become more and more mobile centric, whether the applications are going to become very rich and very immersive. I think the poster child of these rich and immersive application is something like an Oculus VR, right? Very rich online digital experiences. And for the mobile world, you know, you're going to see connected cars and people accessing internet from outer space and everywhere they're, you know, uh, hanging out. And for that world, I think we need to build a very nice software-centric solution that gives us good extensibility for future features that we need to bake into this platform. Yeah. And that's the approach we are taking. Does this uh, help all media types, like video? Does that start playing faster because of Instar Logic, or is it 
helping only uh, pictures and stuff like that? So currently, we are focused on the non-video part of the internet. Mm -hmm. So it's basically web applications involving images, HTML, JavaScript. We have customers using our service for Flash-based games also. We are not focused on video right now. Mm -hmm. Do I have to do anything to my app? Do I have to put uh, some lines of code in there to change how it's getting uh, images and stuff like that? So the most important design principle when we started was to make sure developers or application publishers don't need to change their apps and the users are completely transparent. It's completely transparent to the end users. Mm -hmm. So the answer is no. Interesting. What's, uh, is there any, if I was talking to Akamai and they were like, oh, no, 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 they, 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 what would they say about this technology? What, what would, uh, where's the holes in this technology? Uh, so the holes are not in the technology. The holes they would point are at the company itself. They would say that, look, it's not established. The company is immature. They would st talk bad about my leadership. I'm a you know, really young CEO who's never done this before. Those are the things they're going to talk about. In fact, it's funny. I was having dinner with one of our customers last night. It's a very prominent hotel industry. And they said the experience was very interesting when they baked us off against a very leading CDN vendor whom you mentioned earlier. We went in, we turned on our service, gave them 90% benefit over what they were using. Then this big CDN vendor came in, they had no clue what was going on, showed data from 2011. The technology was the same as six years ago. And when the, this company decided to switch to Instart Logic instead, they said, oh, these guys are you know, nuts, these guys are small, they're not established, we're taking a bigger bet or whatever, right? So that's a typical FUD these big players are going to try to create about us. Yeah. Well, does it work? I guess it doesn't, right? <laughs> well, thanks to support of guys like you, right, Robert? So I think the endorsement we have received in the world of venture capital, in the world of popular media, in the world of you know, smart tech analysts, that's what really helps us get over that problem. Yeah, you just got uh, uh, tens of millions of dollars from Kleiner Perkins yes. and Andreessen Horowitz. Yes, so in the last two years and two months, we have raised about $52 million of total funding across three rounds. Most recently, we announced a CDC round of financing like a month ago that was led by Kleiner Perkins. We added to our existing portfolio of investors that was Andreessen Horowitz, Greylock Partners, Sutter Hill Ventures, Tanaya Capital. So as you can see, some fairly brainy and good people are backing us up. Yeah. Um, anything else I need to know about this technology? If you were talking to the CTO or uh, you know, somebody who's going to buy this, uh, this technology for our customers, what, what would they be asking and, and what would they need to know? So I think the biggest question that they would probably have for us is what are the things that we do really well and what are the things that we don't do really well? And over there, the simple answer to that question is if you have personalized dynamic content which is mostly non-video, that is where our service shines through and we can beat any CDN in terms of performance. I expect uh, as the world moves to wearables, uh, like watches or Google Glass or something like that, that this stuff is gonna be even more important because the expectation that this does something instantly is really high and if a picture is loading like, like it was on that video, it's gonna, first of all, it's gonna kill your battery. Yes. Right, because it's talking. You yes. know, if that's yes. really going in and grabbing a lot of packets, it's yes. killing your battery. And it, 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 your approach, I think, is going to be a very battery efficient approach, right? But two, you want that thing to show up instantly, right? Yes. No, I think that's the big mantra here, right? So if you think about it, and this was a conversation we had with our investors when we were doing the fundraising. If you sit down in a room and have a more academic discussion about mobile load times and speeds, etc. It's kind of understood that, yeah, things will be slower, you know, it's mobile, it's Wi-Fi and all that. But out there in the field, users expect, in fact, a more snappy experience when they're on mobile and wearable devices than they actually even on a desktop. And the, the dilemma here is that all the billions of dollars that the, you know, the internet companies have spent, the cable companies have spent in making the internet faster, that helps a lot for the desktop, but doesn't for all these devices and these wearable computing devices. And that's the future where InstartLogic, we think we're going to be at the cornerstone of that world going forward. Very cool. Where do we learn more about it? Uh, so on June 17th, we are planning an announcement, a new upcoming product announcement, in which we talk about this vision of ours, the new positioning of software-defined application delivery and some really cool features that we are about to release. The two features is, one is a new technology that we have incorporated that takes computer vision-based algorithms to make really smart decisions about what section of an image to slice and send over first and what are the sections that should be sent later. 
So let's say I take a picture of you. Yes. Is this looking at skin tones and eyes and stuff like that and saying, oh, that's the really important part of the image. The rest of it can fill in later. It's going to take a, a look at a whole vector of different attributes that will involve things like color, things like you know tone, things like uh, what the complexity of the overall pattern in the image, et cetera, is. And based on that, it will say that 40% of image is good enough versus 70% of the image is good enough for a first initial impression. The second feature that we are releasing is this feature called Instant Load. And you know, like I said earlier, five years ago when you were building a website or an app, you were optimizing for that Wintel box user. Now you have to think of all the different browsers and the versions and the devices and whatnot, right? Yeah. And th everything think from TV to glass exactly. to watch to phone exactly. to tablet. To exactly. Yeah. And the way the storage layer and the caches behave on all these endpoint devices, it's very different from each other. So as opposed to having developers go and figure out this permutation complexity of what do I optimize for where, we take these decisions dynamically for them and enable the application to access the local cache in the smartest possible manner. Yeah, I, I assume if I'm at Rackspace, because I've talked to some of the strategists qu quite often, and they say, man, we, you know, sometimes you bring a startups uh, and they're uh, really great, really great technology, but mm -hmm. they're they're not built for the kind of scale that Rackspace has, you know, uh -huh. with, with hundreds of thousands uh -huh. of customers and um, customers that are everything from a Oakley to a Ted to a, a beer company to a to a full yeah, uh, yeah. e-commerce store. Uh -huh. are, are you ready for that kind of scale? I mean, I, you know, are you ready to support a, a full-on e-commerce store? So we have been very deliberate in building and designing a software and filling out the core DNA of the team building the software. Our team comprises of, you know, over a, about a third of our team has a PhD in computer science, and a bunch of folks have experience working at companies like Google, like Zynga, like Facebook, et cetera, and they have built systems that scale to worldwide traffic and loads and patterns all of, uh, in, in their past lives. So our service is definitely ready for that kind of a load. Uh, our service was designed in, for this modern world where you can incrementally scale the service out using different physical crowd providers, using different kinds of open source technologies that are available out there, so that you basically never want to be in a position where you are saying no to a customer just because you can't support their scale requirements. I assume you're gonna be able to give me more analytics as well because you know um, how, how that page is being loaded and if somebody hits back or kills the app or the app disappears like they do once in a while, you probably know exactly at what point that app disappeared. We're uh, using other systems. Uh, you have to wait for the whole page to load before you get that analytics, right? So that's a great point. If you think about it, there's a lot of value added services that have been built in the overall application delivery path. And using our new disruptive architecture, there's a ton more that we can provide on top of our platform. So analytics is definitely something we can provide. But right now, you know what startups are, right? It's all about yeah. focus to succeed. And we are very focused on building the most performant solution in the market. And once that, that gameplay is set and everything is on autopilot, then we can explore other areas. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming in oh, and thanks for, tell, thanks telling for me time. about it. It's really intriguing. And yes, absolutely. Hope, uh, hope uh, we see it soon on uh, Rackspace stuff. So you also. I'll, I'll uh, introduce you to the right people. <laughs> I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Robert.